and welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy if you're new here and today we have a very highly requested video. So I've had a couple of comments on a couple of my past videos where I've mentioned what I do for a living and people want to know more. So I have touched on a lot of this stuff in my um, get to know me Q&A um, but I thought I'd dedicate a whole video to the beauty industry. Now this is an industry that I love um, that I've had a long journey with and I thought I'd share with you today um, sort of everything about beauty so if you're interested in that sort of thing if you want to have a nosy um, then just keep watching. So I kind of stumbled into the beauty industry um, a bit differently probably to most people um, so I went to college to do um, beauty specialist techniques so it's a level two uh, qualification I did you needed five GCSEs to get in I believe um, and they just had to be a pass if you didn't get maths and English you had to resit them in college so that's kind of the overview so I got um oh like the 10 GCSEs I think we did um ranging from anywhere from like a C to an A so that's kind of the grades I got um but you don't have to get amazing grades to get into beauty and that's why people consider it a dumb option which is one something I will touch on in this video that really annoys me I'll briefly go over I obviously was quite clever I was quite academic at school and I had a teacher who during a uh, parents evening when I told her I was going to do beauty said why you're clever and that really annoyed me because I thought the beauty industry is somewhere I can make money, it's somewhere I can be my own boss, um, it's quite a female dominated industry so that's super good, we've got lots of opportunities and that's the sort of thing I wanted to do. So I initially went into college to focus on makeup was what I thought in my head, however when you go into college to do a beauty qualification you don't just do makeup, um, there is specialist makeup courses um, but this one was just a beauty. So. The first thing you cover in your level two is manicures, pedicures, they're not gel, they're just normal polish. You do waxing, tinting, um, lash lifts, um, and you do facials. I think that's everything. If not, I'll put it up on the screen what else you do. Um, so you do sort of your real basic things. Oh, and you also do makeup, of course. And in that, you have to learn the science behind the body. You have to learn all the muscles in the body, the bones, everything. It's actually quite technical. So you do need to know a lot of that sort of thing. But don't worry, if you weren't good at science at school, because it's science to do with beauty, it's really interesting. So you learn about the nails, the hair, the skin, everything like that. So it's super interesting. Um, you also have to do about health and safety, obviously you're working with people and their bodies so you need to learn about sort of cross-contamination and all that sort of thing which is super super important so health and safety is a really massive part of it but that's kind of an overview of what you do so obviously I went into it thinking I want to do makeup I want to do this it's kind of a stepping stone to get into makeup but this is something that you shouldn't definitely like you shouldn't compare yourself to other people but I noticed very soon on into my college journey that actually in comparison to all the other people doing makeup, like doing the qualification, they were all very, very good at makeup. And I thought out of the 12 people that are in this class, the fact how I'm not super confident with makeup in comparison to them probably means that in the industry of makeup where it's so big that I potentially might not cut it as a makeup artist. And I also just kind of fell out of love with makeup during the course. Um, I found that doing makeup on other people was so different to do it on yourself and I didn't like that. But then doing the nails and the facials and all that sort of thing and making people feel good really, really drew me to that side of the industry, which is super amazing and that's where I've ended up. So. I initially went in thinking this is actually quite a good idea I could do this as a business by myself and I've always 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 dreamt of owning my own business and that's kind of what I went in with the like thinking I'd stay up late researching spray tan tents and how much money I could make profit on each one and I never really thought I was business minded but I obviously was because I was thinking about this from so young thinking how can I make money from beauty and things like that so that's definitely a great way um, to think about it. But I actually ended up going and working for a salon. Um, now this salon was amazing and they trained me up. Um, so I did actually finish my level two in college and I was working alongside of doing college. I was working in this salon. Um, just started off just a Saturday girl doing the bins and doing the cleaning and doing the odd soak off of some gels. And then they ended up saying to me, instead of going back and doing your level three at college, would you like to do your level three here? So I did 
did an apprenticeship there. Um, they were trainers. So I basically worked full time and learned on the job. Um, we'd have occasional have days where we'd do training and they sent me off to places like Elemis in London, which was amazing. And learned the Elemis facials and massage. I also went to Casey, which is a non-surgical facelift and did training there. So I did a couple of external training courses like that, which I don't think you can do unless you are working for a salon um, or you have to like register to go there and train. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm definitely sure it's probably something you could do. I know becoming an Elemis spa and being trained in Elemis is quite hard. Buy a lot of stock, which is obviously not kind of achievable from a lot of people starting out but anyway so I started learning lots of different things and trained in things like microdermabrasion and um, hot stone massage and um, I did training there when they did trainings to things like um a facial peels and derma pen I learned lots and lots of different things and did all the sort of treatments and worked there for about three years and then I decided that well I did it kind of a bad time because I actually had my notice in if February last year um, and my last day was meant to be in about June, but then obviously March time we went into lockdown So I was forced to kind of obviously the beauty industry got closed down very quickly and I stopped working for them my no like my period of uh, employment ended while we we're in lockdown, so I had a little look and thought is beauty what I wanted to do um, I found working in a salon really stressful and weren't enjoying it as much as I was at the start and I started applying for different jobs and didn't hear anything back from any of them and decided that if I've got this free time um, I actually have a spare room in my family home and they said why don't you just do beauty from home and I don't know what it was that kind of clicked in me and I thought this is exactly what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do beauty from home, have my own studio. I've always dreamt of doing like pamper parties and packages of all these glorious things. I just thought I could then control my work hours. I could control what treatments I do. Um, I found doing a lot of massage in a day was too much for my body. I had really bad back pain and things like that. So I thought I could control it. I could have one do one massage a day if I wanted to and it'd be up to me, I'd be booking my, all my clients in myself and I really like the idea of that. So I decided to set up, um, it's called Simply Vibrant, I'll leave my Instagram here, um, and it's just me and it's just in my little uh, spare room at home and I love it, I decorated it very fun, I'll again, I'll insert pictures of what it's like, I'll get like a little video and put it in of what it's like, if you would like to see a full room tour then go check that out because it's on my YouTube channel already. Um, so I love it, it's my own little creative space, I've made it really bright and colourful and just really I get really inspired when I go in there, which is amazing. Um, so in terms of setting it up, I know a couple of people asked what you have to do to set up from home. So obviously it's different in every country, but in the UK, um, I had to register as a business, as a sole trader, I think. My dad helps me with this because he used to be a financial advisor. So that's super helpful because he's like my accountant. So I registered as a business on like the government website. You have to just put in some details, which that all got sorted. So then you can pay taxes and things like that. Um, I also make sure I have a really good booking system. So I use Fresher. Um, I don't have the plus version. I just have the basic one. Um, but it means I can input all my clients' information on there, put them into their like if they've booked an appointment it goes on my calendar and it's really simple and you, it's really easy to use so even if you're not good with technology it's great it gives them an email confirmation for their appointment and it also gives them a receipt once they're paid and all that sort of thing it's really handy so I don't take card payments I just take cash or transfer so that's what I do as that's just the easiest way and I just make sure that they all get invoices and then my accountant as in my dad gets a copy of the invoices too so he can track all my expenses everything I buy he gets a copy of the receipt and then again that gets tracked to my expenses so he can do my taxes at the end of the year because I would have nowhere to start but I know there's so many apps like QuickBooks and things like that, that you can use to help you with that sort of thing and um, but that's just something to be mindful of um, but in in terms of uh, treatments you can um, do whatever you like as long as you're insured so check your insurance and um, you can do it on loads of different websites um, for beauty insurance just type that in and loads will come up um, just make sure every treatment that you're offering you have insurance for now this can range in price 
if you're just doing nails and spray tans and things like that, then you can get really cheap insurance. If you're doing more intense facials, microneedling, peels and all that sort of thing, your insurance is going to be higher. Um, I pay mine every year. So that gives you kind of a rough a rough guide. And to do sort of derma pen, like the microneedling and peels, my insurance was a couple of hundred pounds. Whereas I know to just do nails and things like that it's only like 30 pounds so you don't kind of it just really depends on what treatments you're offering um and yeah so another big point is in like marketing so i had my business all set up i loved it i had in my mind what treatments i want to do and then i had to kind of market it so my main marketing tool is probably Instagram and Facebook. Um, so I post lots of pictures on Instagram. Every time I get a set of nails, um, I make sure I take lots of good photos. Um, make sure you've got good lighting. Um, I started off with just a tiny little ring light that you put on your top of your phone. And I think I've got the best photos with that. So I'm definitely going to have to start using that again. Um, so definitely try something like that. They're like £7 on Amazon. You just click them onto your phone and then you can just take some really good pictures with that. Um, so social media, definitely promote it on your own social media. So if you already have a platform with followers, then promote it on there. I obviously promote it on my YouTube channel as well. Um, Facebook, get your friends and families to shout it out. Another great thing is um, local Facebook groups. So um, where I live in Billericay, there's loads of Facebook groups for small businesses. Um, we've got like a Billericay discussion page, um, which people just put on whatever they like normally complaining about parking um but you can put it on there just say i've opened up a new salon i'd love for you to check it out and um, maybe attach on some good pictures and things like that so people kind of know what you're about and then in terms of advertising making leaflets um another thing that people don't really know where to start with really the best thing I ever found well Justin told me about was Canva so it's an app that you can use to make leaflets posters Instagram posts literally you name it they've got a template for it so people go on there they make great designs and then you can kind of change it put your information on and that's how I made my price list so I definitely definitely recommend doing a leaflet drop now I know it's a bit old-fashioned and that social media is so much easier and free but I must say that my leaflet drop, I've only done one, got me three clients. Now, if you think three clients, that's not great. One is during a global pandemic, so that's always good. Any client is good at this time. But if you think them three clients will then have so many friends they'll tell, um, they could be a repeat, repeat clients. So the leaflets I got printed, I think I got about 300 maybe 500 and it was uh 25 pounds so you sort of think 25 pounds is it when you're starting out any expense is kind of heartbreaking because you don't know if you're going to get any business from it um but 25 pounds got them printed and then the one client the, the th if you only got one client then who booked in for a 30 pound massage then you've already made your money back and then if they carry on coming for the rest of their life or for even if they come three or four times a year and things like that you should think how much money you'd make just off that leaflet drop so i actually didn't hand out my leaflets um i actually got two of our family friends daughters to do it and they are looking to earn a bit of money so if you sort of think i, I want to do leaflet drops but don't really have the time to hand them out and um, just chat with people around you They're, especially at the moment everyone's looking to make a little bit of money so I actually said to them I'll give you a little bit of cash and I'll also do your set of nails like obviously you've got services that people want so you can just say I'll do your set of nails if you do some leaflet drops for me and that's what I did I got them to drop around my local area I gave them both a little map of um sort of highlighted where they're both going to do it so they don't deliver to the same house and it was such an easy way and quite cost like effective to do it that way and it meant I got all my leaflets out in very quick succession and it got me three clients which is super amazing and every client's great and um, I would say when you start out a lot of your clients are going to be family and friends and things like that but that's in no way a bad thing don't expect that you're going to get loads and loads of clients super quickly and um, from all over because Unfortunately, that's not how it goes when you start out a new business. But family and friends are great. I mean, most of my clients are family and friends, and that's amazing. It also means they don't really mind you taking pictures of their nails. Obviously, check first. Um, but that's super fun. You get to practice on the people around you as well. Practice is key. Even in lockdown at the moment where you can't do treatments, make sure you're keeping up um, with new skills and see what the new trends are and things like that because Instagram is your best friend when it comes to things like this. There's constantly people doing um, lives on Instagram 
showing nail art techniques and things like that. Um, so definitely use all the tools you have out there. But I would, I want to touch on the beauty industry as a whole and kind of um, my opinions of it. So um, if you asked me a couple of years ago what the beauty industry is like, I'd probably say it's sort of gossiping and all that sort of thing and people aren't, they're known to not be nice to each other. But I'd say in the last year, especially finding sort of the beauty industry online, um, it's such a big sense of community now. People are helping each other, people are sharing techniques, uh, apps they use to put in their clients and everything like that, and they're really, really helpful. Um, so if you ever want to feel a part of a community in a something like the beauty industry where you're normally alone, just look out on all the Instagram pages. There's so many. And also the Beauty Edit podcast, again, I'll link it up on here. Um, I listen to it on Spotify and they basically interview all these women that are super, like, it's so empowering because they're all female business women who have got amazing businesses, some that are probably worth millions. And they did it just from doing, going into an industry where people said you have to be dumb and things like that. And that's just so not true. And you can be a very sassy, independent businesswoman just from doing beauty and it's such an amazing platform you can be creative and it's great so definitely don't be like don't let people say it's just a dumb industry and that you're not going to make money from it because you definitely are so that's definitely something and I, I hate the fact it's got quite a negative connotation because it's so not true you have to learn about the body and how it works you're also helping people feel better people come to you with problems and it's great it's such a lovely industry to be in so if you are debating on going into it definitely do it and also if you are debating setting up your own business obviously at the moment it isn't the perfect time to do it but definitely start putting it into motion because it will be the best thing you've ever done and I love it and every day I have a client is like my favorite day ever and it doesn't feel like I'm working it just I love it and it's great and you make people feel good so what a good industry to be in you're literally making people feel great about themselves and I love it so if you are debating it then definitely do it if you've got any questions at all leave them in the comments because I'd be glad to reply to them but I will see you in my next video I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you soon